Magnetic Fields 2, Force on a Current. From GCSE, you should remember that if you have a current carrying conductor, in other words, a, a wire with a current in it, at right angles to a magnetic field, then you will get a force which is at right angles to the field and the current. Uh, to get the direction of the force, we use Fleming's left-hand rule. The way I remember it is you put your thumb and those two fingers all at right angles to each other and I remember FBI. That's easy to remember, FBI. F is the force, B is the field, I is the current and they're all at right angles to each other. The size of the force is proportional to the strength of the field, it's proportional to the current and it's proportional to the length of the conductor in the field. Why is there a force? Well, it's, it's not difficult to explain. It's the interaction of the two fields. There's the uniform field and the field due to the current. And when they are together, they add together. Uh, well, at least looking at this diagram above the wire, they're going to add together and you're going to get lots of curvy flux lines. Below the wire, they're going to cancel. And the result is that all of these flux lines above the wire, imagine they're like rubber bands and they're going to push the wire downwards. Uh, this has a name, it's called the catapult effect. You need to know it. Magnetic field lines like rubber bands have a tendency to straighten. And so what's going to happen is that they're going to push the wire down. It's due to the interaction between the two fields. In SI units, now, uh, if a long straight conductor at right angles to a magnetic field carries a current of one amp and experiences a force of one newton per meter, then the strength of the field is one tesla. This is our definition of the tesla. So a tesla is a newton per amp meter. That's your definition of the tesla. And if you rearrange that, you get a very useful equation, F equals bill, F equals B-I-L. The most useful application of force on a current has to be an electric motor. There are a few others, like the loudspeaker, but motors, electric motors, very important. Looking at this diagram, uh, can you figure out which way the coil will turn? Will it turn clockwise or anti-clockwise? And the answer is that in this case, the coil will turn, it will tend to turn anti-clockwise. There'll be a force on the left pushing down, a force on the right pushing up. Now, we don't need to know a great deal about electric motors. You should remember from GCSE that the direction of the current needs to be reversed every half cycle, otherwise it won't spin. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. If you're using a DC supply, then you use a commutator. If you're using an, well, if you're using an AC supply, then the, the current reverses anyway every half cycle and you use things called slip rings. The coil would spin faster if you had more turns, a stronger field, a bigger current and a bigger area of the coil and you can explain all of them from F equals Bill.